Hi guys, we're coming this week from my sick bed because I have a disgusting head cold. Um, and I was kind of tossing up whether I'd even be able to, <laughs> to, to make this video without having loads of coughing and sniffing and gross stuff in it. But I thought, right, I'll just do it from my bed. I'll just do like a really easy, low key, low effort, <laughs> what I wore last week. Um, so this week, it's been up and down. It's been some really hot days. It's been some kind of mild days. It's been, we've also had some rain actually. It's been all over the place again. But I've worn, I've worn some awesome things this week. So I'll start with this. I talk about this quite a lot because this was, um, this is Jeanne Arthur's Green Tea Cherry Blossom from the Boom collection. Very sadly, they don't sell this anymore. They don't make this anymore. But this for a little while was my signature scent. So I've got quite a few bottles of this. Um, it's just my favourite fruity tea perfume. It's like... It's got a lot of, well, let me just read you the notes. It's got tea, lemon and pear in the top, cherry blossom, blackcurrant and rose in the mid, and then peach and musk in the base. So it's got a really nice musk. It's got an obvious tea, obvious lemon, an obvious pear, and then a really nice juicy blackcurrant. So you do get rose, you do get cherry blossom, but um, there's a really watery peach in this one, and it doesn't veer off into the kind of peach that I really don't like. So this is just a comfort blanket for me. It's really easy to wear. I just love this. It blows my mind in a way that they stopped making this, but the closest you can get to it is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Pomegranate, which they do still make. I ended up decluttering that one when I got this, just because... This is less shampooy to me than that one, and I much prefer a, a perfume that's not too shampooy. But yeah, they're very, very similar in terms of how they smell. I think this one's maybe slightly sweeter, but yeah, if you if you love green tea pomegranate, then you'll know kind of what this one smells like. Um, yeah, it's just it's a beautiful one, really, actually great any time of year if I'm honest. So. Oh, another tea perfume. So I, I was on an interview panel on Monday. So I was in the, in a meeting room with colleagues. There were three of us on the panel and then we had, I think, four interviews. So, um, gosh, that really doesn't pick up too well, does it? Maybe I'll have to, like, because the still is written on the back. So I wore still. This is my chic perfume. I was wearing a, uh, what's it called? Um, oh gosh, I can't even remember words today. I was wearing a suit, what am I talking about? I was wearing like a sort of pale sage green suit for the interviews and I wanted something chic and I didn't want to smell too strong but I wanted it to last all day and this is what I'm going to go for in that situation because Still is such a beautiful, lovely, easy to wear perfume for me. This is my husband's, possibly his favourite out of any of my perfumes. Um... I've got this big uh, 100ml bottle, I think it cost me about 20 quid, which is madness for the quality. This is Earl Grey Tea White Pepper Mandarin Orange Apple and Rice in the top, and it's a green apple. And I still like it despite this being a green apple, because I quite often don't like green apple. But apparently with, with the tea and the rice and everything else that's in here, fine. Middle notes are Jasmine, Lily of the Valley, Freesia, Honeysuckle, Orange Blossom and Rose. And the um, the Jasmine here is like jasmine tea to me i think this perfume smells like jasmine tea um it really really reminds me of the fragrance i get when i have a cup of beautiful ja jasmine tea which is my favorite tea i'm actually having matcha today because it's kind of a bit more <laughs> beneficial i feel for my ridiculously horrible head cold but Oh, in, oh, I didn't do the base. So it's pepper, musk, sandalwood, iris, and amber in the base. There's actually quite a lot of notes. It's a, I love this one. I know there are people who don't like this, but I think it's actually genuinely quite popular. And I think it's by far one of the best tea perfumes I've ever smelled. This green tea and boom green tea cherry blossom are my favorite tea perfumes. Um, yeah, it's just so, so chic. It's elegant. It's not overwhelming, but it, it's really noticeable. It lasts on. I can still smell it on my on my suit. Like when I was, I kind of left it out to air a bit and then I put it back in its special, you know, the the bag protector things. And then um, I could still smell it when I put it away, like so clearly. And I was like, oh my God, is that what I smelled like that day? Nice. <laughs> okay. Sorry if there's sniffing, guys. It's just, ugh. So then... We had, I think we had a hot day on the weekend. It might have been both days or hot. I can't really remember. But I wore this 
um, in the morning. I can't, I also can't remember if I wore this for the whole day. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, Born Lovely, Sarah Jessica Parker. This is a actually a lovely kind of grey glass, 100ml bottle. Also super in a, like inexpensive. I think this was maybe... Oh, I might have been even £15 for this big boy. And I've got a rollerball. I've also got the body spray that they threw in for free. The body spray is maybe even more beautiful than this because it's got less of the base notes. Um, this is a peony and black, watery black currant, almost aquatic feeling, freshy. So it's peony, cassis, mandarin in the top, free shirt, orange blossom, honeysuckle in the mid, base note, cedar, patchouli and caramel. You can't tell there's caramel in it. It just stops it from being sharp, which for me and peony is rare. I can't normally wear peony perfumes. I normally find them so screechy. Um, this one, I don't find screechy at all. In the body spray version, there's a little bit less of the patchouli and cedar, but you don't really get much of that in here anyway. Some people can't smell this perfume. My husband can't smell it when I first spray it, but he can smell the dry down. Mmm. It's just... I just love this as a fresh perfume. Other people might call it a gym scent. I just call it a lovely, freshy, really good for waking you up, making you feel clean in the morning. There's a slight wet laundry smell about this, but not at all harsh. It's quite feminine i just love it i mean it's it's kind of there's something slightly unisex about born lovely as well because it is such a freshy but i think it's if you compare this to something like um light blue which is obviously a very popular f freshy for women i find that very masculine i find this is the same kind of feel in its kind of watery fresh clean um, straight out of the shower, you know, that kind of smell. But I do think it's more feminine because it's a bit more floral and it's less woody. So yeah, I just, I love Born Lovely. Definitely not up over on the street though. Um, oh yeah, so I tried because, who was I watching? Oh, I think I was watching, um, uh, oh guys, I'm so sorry. My brain is not functioning. I can't remember anything. Um, anyway, there's a, there's a, a fabulous perfume reviewer who's been on YouTube for ages, who I watch all the time, and for some reason the channel's name has completely gone out of my brain. She loves Lush the Comforter, and I saw her talking about it again. I think she'd just restocked or something. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to get mine out. This is all that's left from my Comforter Big Spray. Now, that is not... Um, I mean, I think those are 200ml bottles. This is maybe 50ml left. That's not really because I wore this perfume a lot. It's because I used to spray it around the house because I struggle a little bit. I love the fact that this smells like Ribena when you first get it, when you first spray it. It's got that delicious kind of black currant cordial smell, really sweet and sugary and nice. But there's something in the dry down of this that makes me feel strange. And it's I think it's because it really smells like there's like a vanilla note in the base of this. I don't think it lists that. On Fragrantica, it just says Cassis, Bergamot and Cypress. Um, but yeah, it gets very sweet in the base in a way that I find uncomfortable to wear. So I tried wearing it again and I still found it uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, I just, I think this is not a perfume for me. So what I ended up doing, even before this had worn off, I put this one over the top. Unfortunately, you can't get this one, but I think any sharp black currant might be quite good. This is Brocard Black Currant and Mint. So this is a Russian perfume, and you can't get perfumes from Russia thanks to the horrific war that's been going on for a long time. And all we've got blockades. This is um it's got a beautiful mint, but it's got very syrupy black currant, but it's also musk in it. Um, and a slight bit of tartness. So I would say the comforter doesn't really have any tartness and it has what I consider to be quite a vanillic dry down without musk. Um, funnily enough, spraying this over the top really reminded me and kind of, or at least um, high, highlighted to me. Is that even a word? I mean, who cares? <laughs> you probably don't care, do you? Um, it, it really brought home to me why this one doesn't work for me. Because it needs, for me, it needs the musk in the base and it needs the tartness in the top to match out the sugariness and the sweetness. Um, it's just, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel quite complete to me. Whereas this one does. 
and then these together this just kind of gave this a bit more of a vanilla -y feel I still prefer this on its own to be honest but um, yeah I'm just going to use this one to spray around the room like I used to now brocard blackcurrant and mint is blackcurrant mint green notes green leaves red berries musk and rose it's really really nice um, it's it's got a few crossovers with Herbe from L'Occitane and um, I'm trying to think of any other black currency perfumes that I still have, not so much. It's definitely in the realm of something like Falling in Love from Philosophy. It's got that kind of feel, but a little bit more herbal because it's got the mint. No, I just had a big cough and I was hoping that I wouldn't have to edit this. But anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up, this was the one that I wore for the rest of the day. This is what I sprayed on first. But yeah, the comforter just doesn't really work for me. And funnily enough, I have, I smell people testing it in store sometimes when I'm in Lush. And I love how it smells in the air but I just can't wear it, you know? So it's not that I think it's bad. I just think it's just not for me. Um, okay, so then I did another layering, which, and again, I don't normally layer. It's not normally deliberate. It's normally when I don't like something. This time, rare occasion, deliberate. So I wore to work, um, exclamation, this is exclamation wild musk from Coty. And I put it over the top, oh, upside down. So I found I found this bit. So this is uh, eccentric molecules, molecule 04. Uh, this is the, the card it comes in. So this is a sandalwood molecule. I can smell it so strongly right now, but I can't smell it on myself. <laughs> so I put this one on. I can't smell it on myself, really. I can just get a waft from like just generally every now and again. I'll remember I've got it on. But because this is not very long lasting, I put this one under here because there's it doesn't list sandalwood, does it? Oh, wait, no, it does. It does. So exclamation wild musk from Coty. Orange, mandarin, orange, bergamot. Floral notes in the mid and then musk in the base with sandalwood and vanilla. So in the original wild musk, it doesn't list sandalwood, but there's definitely sandalwood in that perfume. It's a musky sandalwood perfume, um, which is probably why I love it. So really really nice like a fruitier version of the old wild, wild musk still really light still doesn't last very long you can spray so much of it on and it doesn't layer up to get crazy this is just like boosting that kind of slightly musky sandalwoody smell um like with a like a warmth and a coziness but i did actually get my husband to try this this week and he wore it for me and the decision was very much made that this little bottle is going to go into his collection because I cannot get enough of how he smells in this. Oh my goodness, it is so heavenly. And I and I think it's definitely unisex, but I think because I, I can't smell it on myself, but I love it on him, it's like, well, he might as well just wear it for my pleasure then. I think, you know, Lolita Lempica is still his favourite. Lolita Lempica, is it called Lolita Lempica Hom? Um, but yeah, this is, oh my God, he smells. See, I can smell it so clearly from the bottle, but on my skin, I can't smell it. And he's got a t-shirt on today that he was wearing when he tried this on and I can smell it on him again and it's just lush. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to donate this one to him, knowing that if I wanted to get a little spray, I'm sa I'm saving the little um, uh, sample spray for my collection, but I'm going to give him this big one because he just, oh my goodness, I love how he smells in this. Guys, if you are not too bothered about smelling yourself, um, if there's any men watching this, especially... I feel like this is a real, there's something very alluring about uh, Molecule 04. There's something just sexy about it because it's, I don't know, it's just got this creamy yumminess. Mmm. Okay. They only list sandalwood. It's not actually called sandalwood, the molecule that's in this. It begins with a V, I think, but it is supposed to be sandalwood and it's amazing. Okay. So another, um, did I have more meetings on this? Yes, I did. I had, oh, of course. So we had the interviews on Monday and then we had to meet as a panel to discuss the candidates and all the rest of it, do our scoring on the Tuesday. So I wore this. Oh my God, I love this. I love it so much. This is La Lique Le Parfum. You can really hopefully um, see that cool face on the top gorgeous beautiful lovely bottle with a stunning perfume the Lee perfume is just I this is one of those where I can't believe how inexpensive it is considering how fabulous it is and I was wearing this one and I was like 
Now, I really have a specific type of vanilla. I will actually talk to you about another vanilla that I, I just ordered a secondhand bottle of eBay because you'll see at the end of this, I'll, I'll talk about some samples. But I will save that, the one that I actually wanted a bottle of, until next time so I can tell you when I've like actually got the bottle. I can show you the bottle. But I was like, I really have a specific vanilla that I like and it is the vanilla that's in Lalique Le Parfum. It's in Eau Duel, both of them. Um, it's in this other one that I've just test. It's not, it's like there's, it's kind of similar in the Burberry Goddess. It's that kind of vanilla that I really like. And it is very much in here. And it's also in Baby Cat. And I really like Baby Cat, but it's so expensive. If I find like a good dupe of that one, I'd be happy to have it. Also, I've said to my husband, if he ever, if he for some reason ever has a huge amount of money, then he's welcome to buy me Baby Cat. <laughs> but um, the vanilla in there is just so up my street and it seems like I like an almost I mean simple isn't quite the right word but I like a not too floral or not too fruity um lovely delicate slightly transparent vanilla that is either yeah a little bit smoky or a little bit green so those seem to be the ones that I lose my mind over and I find easy to wear um and this it's not as green as Eau Duel EDT and it's not as smoky as um, Eau Duel EDP. But it has that very similar vanilla in it. And I looked and this is a perfume made by Dominic Ropion. And he also ha made, um, it's the nose behind I should say maybe, Baby Cat. And it's a really similar vanilla. But Baby Cat is like, oh, sugar, sorry. I just knocked my microphone. I'm in such a weird position compared to normal when I'm doing this. Um, Baby Cat, I think, in the UK is £175 for a bottle. And I don't think that's even a 100ml bottle. This I got for 25 I've just saw a bottle of this on Natino. It's one of their special sales. So I've mentioned before that you can return things to Natino if you've opened it, but you didn't get along with it. And then they sell those on for cheaper, which I've got a lot of my perfumes from there for cheap by getting the ones that have just, they haven't got their cellophane on them anymore. And they've been like sprayed once or twice. And I'm happy because they've got this, is they've got this for £17 at the moment. And I just, it's insanely good. I love this perfume. I loved wearing this. It really feels very similar to when I wear um, Eau Duel. But either of them. It's because it's that similar vanilla and I love it. So this is West Indian Bay Pink Pepper and Bergamot in the top. Then it's middle notes of heliotrope, almond and jasmine in the mid. Base notes of vanilla, tonka bean, sandalwood and patchouli. I'd, personally, I don't get much jasmine and I don't get much patchouli, patchouli. But what I get is like this fluffy, almondy heliotrope. Now, I can be really fussy about heliotrope, but because it's got that balance from the slightly spicy pink pepper and the ever so slightly green, slightly smoky patchouli and the, and the lovely aromatic and like Indian bay, it balances out so nicely that this is like, it feels like ODUL, but it feels more feminine. They don't smell exactly the same, but they are. I put them in the same group in terms of my mood in the same way that I'd say like, goddess and mongyalan and my new eisenberg one jose um those are in a group for me for if i'm in a certain type of mood and this is in a group for me with a new one i've got coming to me <laughs> which i'm so excited to talk to you about um and my oduels this is this is the mood i find it really classy it's like the vanilla equivalent of like my still so it was a toss-up for me and it was entirely weather dependent between whether I would wear Lalique Le Parfum for the interviews or still and then it just happened it was all hot today so I went for still and then the next day wasn't as hot so I went for this one just gorgeous like I love it I'm obsessed I really love this um I think if you love Eau Duel, I, I think you will love this. I think if you find Eau Duel too green or you don't like more transparent, unusual vanillas and you like things that are a bit more puddingy, then you might not like this. But, oh, just so gorgeous. I love it so much. Oh, right. I haven't worn this one for ages and I didn't put it in my spring perfumes because you can't really get it anymore. You might be able to get this second hand. You might be able to get it at other places, but I've not seen this for sale in the UK anywhere for ages. And because it's a London brand, 
I haven't really talked about it, but I do love it. And it's one that I wear and it's my favorite tuberose perfume apart from poison. But it's my favorite kind of purer tuberose. So this is um, just real cheapy. I think this was maybe a tenner. This is Ted Baker, London. It's got a purple juice, if you can see. Um, so this is a it's called XO Extraordinary Woman. So yeah they have xo2 which is um not one that i'm keen on because it has a, a quite a synthetic wood in it but it's a shame because that's a plum perfume and these two those two perfumes it's almost like they took the plum out of poison and the sort of slightly smoky woody notes out of poison and put it in one perfume and they took the um the florals and the musk from poison and put it in this one so I feel like if you layered them together you'd get something a bit poison like if you see what I mean like they're both really nice in that respect but yeah I passed on the XO2 just because I didn't like the wood but this one this is African orange flower in the top tuberose gardenia and jasmine in the mid and then the base is heliotrope and musk interestingly I was not expecting it my husband complimented me on this. Now, he rarely says anything about floral perfumes. This, as I said, because this has the kind of tuberose that uh, I get in Poison, it has like a bubblegummy, grapey tuberose in this. But it's quite light. It's not too, like, overly sweet. It's not too strong. It's got, like, a slightly watery feel about it, which is probably why I like it. Um, But I sprayed it on in the morning, and he literally he went into the corridor and he said i can smell i can oh it smells good i can smell it from out here whatever it is and he came in and um he gave me a sniff and he said oh that smells really good you smell really nice today and he doesn't like florals like he doesn't normally say anything about florals and then i had um a meal with my friend sam we went out for dinner and she she gave me a hug and complimented me on this as well so this got two compliments in one week um <laughs> and i'm sad to say that because you can't really get it anymore but this, I would say, if you could imagine my way, but massively kind of more sheer, much, much more sheer, much less syrupy, less sickly, because I find that one too sickly and sweet. It's too, it's just too far down the syrupy florals for me. This has like, it's like got a little bit more of a tartness, but it's not screechy. It's watery, it's fresh, but it. I think like Lontody and My Way is kind of the closest thing here, but it's a much simplified and less sickly version, you know? I don't know, maybe there's a flanker of My Way that, that is similar to this, but yeah, I really love this. If you ever see it anywhere and you like tuberose, then I think this is a really pretty perfume, but yeah. So yeah, that went down really well this week and I really loved wearing it and it's just a lovely little one. Okay, what have we got? What have we got? Ah. Oh. This was my treat for Friday. Mm. Full Gourmand. This is Far by Anne Fragrances. That's Simon Constantine's perfume company. He used to make perfumes at Lush. Um, <laughs> I've made myself a spreadsheet. I was inspired by Claire Smith. I've made a spreadsheet so that I can mark down the perfumes that I've got that I actually like and actually part of my collection, not, not including the ones that... I'm planning to get rid of um, because I wanted to put down the house and the perfumer to see who's my favorite perfumer so I will make a video like a stats style video in honor of how much I love Claire's videos because um, she's inspired me to that so I will make that for you guys at some point and I can already tell you that Simon and Mark Constantine are pretty high on my list of how many perfumes I've got that they've made that I really like um, this smells like a lemon and lime cheesecake. It smells like my mum's English version of a key lime pie. If there's loads of jumps in this video, it's just me cutting out coughs because no one wants to listen to that. Um, <laughs> so my mum's uh, key lime pie is more, it's like a lime cheesecake, like a non-cooked, you know, one with cream cheese and digestive biscuit. And this is kefir lime yuzu in the top, mandarin orange labdum in the mid and then biscuit in the base. I, it doesn't list vanilla, but there's definitely a vanillic sweetness here that gives you that cheesecakey feel. Um, it's, but it's, if you don't like 
the bitterness of lemon if that's going to bother you you might not like this one because it has a very realistic juice and peel and pith smell about it which is why I like it and think it smells quite natural but if if you will struggle with a genuinely sharp citrus and a bitter peel and the the sweetness in here won't be enough for you maybe but this is what I wanted Acro Bake to smell like this is what I wanted Devotion to smell like from um Dolce and Gabbana and those just smell like chemicals to me they just purely smell like chemicals they smell either like um well Acro Bake smells like lem sip to me like paracetamol and uh, medicinal lemon Devotion smelled like um, cleaning products to me and I couldn't smell the sweetness. So this is giving me everything that I need. This is a 10ml bottle. Now this is a very independent indie niche um, brand. So there's, it's £35 for a 10ml. But it's not one I'm going to wear all the time but I really, really love it. So this is amazing. I read a review. This is the Eau de Parfum formulation, but I read a review on Fragrantica and the person said that they bought the EDT and for some reason the EDT seems to project more than this one. Um, so yeah, maybe if I run out of this, I might just buy the EDT bottle because I think those are about 50 for 50 mil, which for a, like a really niche vegan natural ingredient kind of brand, I think is really good. But yeah, I mean... Oh, it's absolutely so tasty. You can, by the way, get this shipped to the U US apart from Texas, weirdly. That seems to be the only place that they can't ship these to, but I think they can ship them, ship them other places in America. Okay, so let's talk about some samples. This is just a random little one that got put into my... Um, I ordered something on eBay and they just chucked this little thing in, which I think is probably from an old sampler set. So this is called... I'm gonna, I'll try and pull this up here so you can see it amongst the orange groves and this is a marks and spencer's perfume which i'm very sad to tell you doesn't seem to be for sale anymore you can get it on ebay i, I checked um i don't know if you can buy marks and spencer's anywhere outside of the uk probably not but yeah this is a really really nice clearly inspired by love don't be shy perfume but it's not as sickly and it's not as heavy and therefore I think this might be my favourite version that I've smelt of that Love Don't Be Shy profile. This is just listed as mandarin, orange and lemon in the top, orange blossom, neroli and jasmine in the mid and musk in the base. But it's sweet, definitely sweet. Um, I didn't need a huge amount of this. I wore it at the weekend and I, I didn't think that I'd wear it the whole day. But I did actually wear it most of the day. This is, I think, a 2 mil. Oh, it's a 2.5 mil because, yeah, it's Marks and Spencer's, right? So they're generous. So I reckon, I don't know, did I wear about 5ml of this for the whole day and resprayed it a couple of times? Really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, I really liked this one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually buy myself a bottle purely because I have a dupe oil of Love Don't Be Shy. It's not my favourite profile, but it's one that I just fancy very occasionally. And because I have that oil, I can just only put on a tiny bit of that and it gives me a similar feel. But this is really nice. It's a bit fresher. It's a, a bit brighter. Like I said, it's much more transparent. But it is that general aroma of Love Don't Be Shy. That kind of slightly marshmallowy, sweet um, uh, dessert version of an orange blossom. Like it's, it's, it's really pretty. It's weird that they don't do this one anymore. I would have thought this is much nicer than half of the other ones I smelt when I went there recently. <laughs> So now we get on to these little guys. This is from a place called scentsample.co.uk. There was just, there was a couple of things I just really wanted to try. And then I added in a couple of randos when I was looking, because I think it was like free delivery for £10 and over. And I got four, I got four samples for about, yeah, it was pretty much £10 and then it was free delivery. So I was chuffed with that. So if we start with, what have I got up first? Oh yeah. I just wanted to smell this because I've never smelled it before and it's one of those perfumes that um, I see quite a lot on like uh, eBay and on Direct Cosmetics and other kind of grey market places. So this one, this is Hugo Boss XX for women. This is an EDT and yeah, I really don't like this one. Um, oh, I just... I knew it was going to be risky because it's got uh, jasmine. I think jasmine's voted as being quite high up here. But 
um there is there's uh, there's something in here that i find so sharp and screechy and I, I think to be fair again it is let me just smell it on the paper can't really smell a huge amount anymore but i don't want to spray it anywhere this one actually leaked a little bit uh, uh, yeah i can't do this one it's not for me um it has there are some perfumes i have, i found it in hugo boss femme actually and a few other perfumes that um they seem to either have a musk in that i find exceptionally screechy or there's some kind of ambroxan like aroma chemical that just turns it head splitting this one is head splitting to me and i know not everyone finds that because i've been reading the reviews but the notes are lychee at the top or lychee as we say in the uk um black currant mandarin orange and then the middle notes are jasmine basmati rice that's why i was interested really rose um the, mu the musk sandalwood and amber in the in the base so it might be the lychee sometimes i find lychee screechy sometimes i find jasmine notes very screechy sometimes i find the musk in these screechy but yeah this is just too headachey for me it's fruity it's fruity floral mainly jasmine there is a slight creaminess i think from that rice but it's not savory um this smells it has a little bit of the dna from hugo boss um hugo woman is it called the one in the round bottle i've got hugo ex, uh, hugo woman and hugo woman extreme i think i've got both of those i get confused because they've also got one called boss woman but i think the one i've got is hugo woman so it's got a little bit of that but it also reminds me a little bit of elizabeth arden's beauty now that is another perfume that's kind of floral a bit fruity very shampooy and has a rice note in it they don't smell like the same perfumes at all, but I do think there's definitely some crossover and they remind me of each other. Now, I couldn't wear um, Beauty and I smelt that again quite recently and I was like, no, that one definitely has the same kind of thing going on here where it goes super shampooy, really sharp and screechy and a bit headachey to me. So yeah, there's definitely a crossover there. So this one, not for me. That'll be, there's only like a little bit in there, but I'll just chuck that in when someone orders something from me from eBay because this is not one I need to keep because I'm never going to wear this because it just doesn't work for me. I did try it on my skin and then I, it was a scrubber for me, a real genuine scrubber. So that one, don't like that one. Okay. And then the other one that I wanted to try because I saw Veronica says talking about this and she said this is one of her because like realistically i really like her channel but she's definitely gone more and more and more niche as time has gone on and the perfumes have become more and more expensive so i was really interested to see her video where she talked about things that have survived like that she's had for years and this is one of those this one is it's not like cheap but it's definitely a bit more affordable than some of the perfumes that she wears so this is gucci bamboo and this is the edp I've never been able to smell the EDT um, and I don't think you can get samples of that one anywhere, it doesn't seem. But the EDP, they had some samples, so I thought I'd really like to smell this. If it survived in her collection and it's like fresh and it's clean, it's pretty, I thought that would be quite interesting. So um, the notes for Gucci Bamboo EDP are bergamot in the top, Casablanca lily, ylang ylang and orange blossom in the mid, the base of sandalwood, Tahitian vanilla and amber. So this one, um, this is a pretty freshy. It is nice. Um, it reminds me, uh, I've got to try and remember what they are now. I might try and get up my um, Fragrantica so I can check. Because it reminds me of two things mixed together. It reminds me, it is a freshy, but then it has a kind of a slightly soapy, thick feel to it in, as well, the more it dries down. And I'd say when it dries down, it smells a little bit like uh, Carolina Herrera's 212, which is a perfume I have. That one smells like a white bar soap. This is not as musky and soapy as that, but it definitely smells a little bit like it. Um, let me just put in Gucci Bamboo so I can have a look and see. Come on. For granted, because sometimes so slow, but I'm not sure if that's just my phone, you know. I have a bit of matcha. Mm oh dear my poor throat so gucci bamboo let's have a look at the comparisons because i remember feeling like this smells like two of perfumes that i've got or have had mixed together 
So, oh, of course. Okay, yeah, Hugo Woman again. It is Hugo. So there's a little bit of Hugo Woman and a little bit of Carolina Herrera's 212 going on here. Like, weirdly. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of what it reminds me of. And it's really pretty. I wouldn't want a bottle because I have those two other perfumes. And the combination of the two isn't any more appealing to me. There is something a bit screechy in here to me. Again, I think... I think Gucci as a house just doesn't do perfumes at work for me. I don't I don't know that I have any Gucci. I'll have to check that now I've got a spreadsheet. But I don't think I have any Gucci perfumes. And I think I've only in my life owned one. Um which was Gucci Rush and I didn't even like that one. So um yeah, not uh, this is super pretty and I understand why people like it. I think it's a really nice, quite strong still in that kind of fresh realm fresh and clean um but it's not one i'd want a bottle of i'd be interested to smell the edt see if there's any differences or yeah but i think the edt is even more highly voted as smelling like 212 and i have that one so i don't need this one but yeah i really like the bottles so i think they're really pretty i will keep the sample for that one now then this one was interesting so this next one let's have a look let me get the notes up so this is woo Guerlain Neroli Outre Noir, which is one of their super expensive perfumes. I don't know if they still make this, but um I've heard Sarah Mays talking about it and just I basically I just needed another perfume uh to put it up to ten quid so I got free postage and this was pretty much the same price as postage, so it just made sense to get something. I was looking for Lavon's Trianon, I think it's called. But they don't have that. Nowhere has samples of that. You can't get that anywhere. Um, but I, I wanted to compare that to some of to some things for my lavender videos when I actually get around to making them. So anyway, I went for this one because I thought it would be interesting. Now, I don't really like Neroli. Uh, Orange Blossom is not one of my favourites. But um, I've read enough about the dry down of this to, to think I wanted to know what it smelled like. So this is interesting. This has tea in it as well, which kind of sells it to me, you know. So... <laughs> So, Nero Neroli Outre Noir. I'm probably saying that in a really ridiculous way, but never mind. So, the top notes, Petit Grain, Bergamot, Tangerine, Lemon, Grapefruit. Middle notes, a tea, Neroli, Orange Blossom, Smoke, Earthy Notes. Base notes, a Myrrh, Vanilla, Benzoin, Amber, Musk, Mallow, um, and Oak Moss. So, when you first spray that, you get that stuff in the top. You get an incredibly bitter green Petit Grain. And you get a lot of citruses. The neroli pops through with the orange blossom immediately. And it's a very, very, very bitter neroli. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is just, I mean, this is like barbershop um, aftershave splash levels of neroli and petit grain. And I was like, I just don't like those kind of perfumes, you know. But and then it was crazy. It dried down and I loved it. I do. I can smell the tea in here and I do like the tea. But I'd say if you want a kind of slightly floral, lovely tea perfume, you can just get a still, right? It has it has a little bit of that kind of feel in terms of almost in texture. But the dry down of this smelled so similar to something I have and that I've talked to you guys about before. And I never know how to explain what it smells like. Um, because I've never smelled anything that smelled like it until the dry down of this. And randomly, I was talking about it on my community recently because I voted for this smart, sparkly pumpkin from Lush. This is a body spray that they did, I think, pretty much on one year. And I think it might have been 2020, but I can't I can't really remember. I feel like it was pandemic times, but I might be wrong. Um, it was certainly back when they, they had these flip ones instead of the ones that are white now. So... Um, sparkly pumpkin is supposed to be like citruses and juniper and squash and like i think there's like some kind of christmasy spices in here this it's very pretty it's warming and cozy but it's also bright and citrusy and smells quite clean it's like it's something i find quite hard to describe and then the dry down of this just reminded me of it so much this has a kind of slightly sugary quality it has um, a warmth from that myrrh, benzoin and ambrette in the base and then it's got the earthiness and the smoke and that is kind of like I get a bit of that I mean it's not massively earthy because there's so much citrus going on here I think it might be grapefruit um, 
it's just so pretty like I love this one but this smells like this without having to go through the hellish stage of petty grain and neroli that's just so so bitter so yeah it was really interesting um what does it even say uh okay you've got juniper citrus yeah it's grapefruit but there's definitely other things going on here that gives this a really interesting smell it smells it's sort of wintry without being wintry and you can totally wear it anytime. So I voted for this one in the Lush put something up recently on their community tab to ask what perfumes people wanted to come back or what products they wanted in perfume form. And um, I voted for Sparkly Pumpkin to come back because I think this is such a nice body spray and I imagine hardly anyone ever got to smell it. And I only have it because I managed to get it on eBay um, because someone literally... I bought something else from, from, I bought some other Lush thing and someone sent me a little vial of s Sparkly Pumpkin and I was like, Lush, oh my God, this is such a good one. So yeah, I really hope they bring this back so you guys can smell it because then I feel like you can also smell the dry down of Neroli Outre Noir, which I'm sure if they still make it is incredibly expensive and if they don't make it, it's also incredibly expensive. But yeah, the way this opens, I hated it. The way it dried down, loved it. So yeah, I mean fabulous okay guys that's all my stuff for this week i will come back to you and talk to you about um the other thing that i got from these samples that i loved and then just oh i had to have it so i had to go and have a look for a bargainous version of it you know on ebay i the joy of ebay and i hope that my sales bring people joy on ebay as well is that sometimes people buy things they don't like them and most places in the uk won't let you return them so it's really really nice to sometimes just sell them on for cheaper and allow people to get awesome perfumes for like half the price but anyway so that's what i just did and i'll talk to you about it next week but i hope i'll be feeling better soon the cold's moving really quickly so yeah, I hope this wasn't too annoying to watch this kind of moving around all over the place in my sheets <laughs> video. But thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please do consider subscribing. Hopefully I didn't sound too disgusting in this. But you know, as much as I can apologise, I've got a cold, people get ill. So you know, but I do obviously hope it's not too gross. And I'll try to cut out anything that was really gross. <laughs> Tell me if you've got any of these. Tell me what you've been wearing. Tell me what your weather's been like and like what how you've been perfuming up to go with it. Yeah, and let me know. Let me know if you've tried any of these things that I sampled because there's some there's some really I just had some really nice perfumes this week. Yeah, I think the comforter really is the only thing that I actually wore properly that I was like, no. I even really liked the little Marks and Spencer's one, so yeah. Alright, bye guys.